Hi, I'm James Smith from RC4 Wireless, and this is a little clip about the DMX4 DIM, four-channel dimmer in the RC4 Magic series of wireless DMX and wireless dimming. This is uh, really a carry-on from some of what I've covered in the little video clip about the DMX2 DIM, so I'm not going to repeat a lot of some of the detail that I've covered about that product. If you're just seeing this video about the 4 DIM for the first time, take a moment, go back and watch the DMX2 DIM video, and, uh, and then come and watch this one again. And also in the video that I have that's the preview of the entire RC4 Magic system, when I come to the 4 channel unit, these are the same pieces. And if we have a look at these now, this is a very small AA battery battery pack. I'm using rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries in this case. Um, this is an RGB LED component. This uh, little module in here, the small circle in the center, is the same piece that is used, uh, for example, in uh, RGB LED signage. It's one pixel in a sign. Um, arrays of these are what are used in, uh, in the outputs of RGB lighting fixtures, the commercial LED lighting that you're using all the time. And uh, our, our dimmers, our functional LED drivers. So with the addition of a, of a current limiting resistor, which are what these lumps are, you can, uh, through that one extra component, directly connect the LEDs to the dimmers. So the four channel dimmer gives us an opportunity to run the red, green, and blue and have one channel left over. And that is exactly what we have here. The LEDs run very cool. They don't draw a great deal of power. So we have something that's very small and very lightweight easy to build into a, a, a prop or a, a very small set piece, uh, even costumes, hats, wigs. Um, very, very uh, a cool running, very, very efficient. And now we'll, uh, we'll look at the, I'm just going to keep it at a very low level so you can see that is the, the red component of that. And this is the green component of it. There's the blue component of it. And if I bring up all three together, you'll see that they light in tandem. And of course, if they mix, they become quite a white light. And I have this uh, top of a paint can that works quite well as a diffuser, so we can get a much better sense of the colors now when we put that on there. Some very nice color mixing that can be done with this. And it is and note also, I'm going to take that diffuser off again. I am very, very pleased with the quality of our LED dimming. So if you look closely at that, you know, you're probably familiar with uh, LED dimming that looks very steppy down at the bottom end. And this is quite smooth. You will see a few increments there at the bottom. But this is LED dimming with 16,384 steps. If you do some binary math there, you realize that's 14-bit dimming. There certainly are some LED dimmers out there that are 16-bit, so there's 65,000 steps. But there's some trade-off between microprocessor size and power, how many steps you can have, and how fast you can run the PWM uh, cycle. And so this is a good trade-off for something that will fit into a very small package like our little dimmer is and still give you enough steps that the bottom end of the curve looks really very, very acceptable. I think there are some uh, quite expensive LED products um, that are not as smooth as this for color mixing at the, at the low end. I mean, if you look at where I have the faders, I am down quite low in the range. I'm down in the bottom 25% as I'm mixing these colors, and I still have very nice, smooth gradations down in there to change hue and, and effects of tint. So that's a, a very effective device. And, and then up at the high end, of course, we have so much brightness, in fact, that our, our video camera and monitors will even blow out. It's almost impossible to, to tape this with video technology with any success. But it is uh, Really, one of the highlights of the RC4 Magic Dimmer is its ability to do LED dimming very, very smoothly and with a great deal of uh, finesse. So uh, uh, channel assignments are done the same way as they are with the two channel. You've seen this here working on channels two, three, and four, but I'm going to reassign them now just to show you how easy it is. Once again, as I demonstrated in the two channel dimmer, the uh, channel, the, the dimmer curve is selected 
by the level of the channel. I'm going to, for a moment to show you the wrong curve. So here is channel 6, and I've set it uh, at around 60%, and now I will pick that for one of the channels. And this is what linear LED dimming looks like. And you'll see that it pops on quite bright down at the bottom. It is very steppy. It gets bright quite quickly, and then up in the top half of the range, you see very little variation in level. And that is how an LED as a component responds to, um, to linear variations in power. But now if I set my uh, DMX level to around 40%, and we'll reset that, we now have the inverse square law curve, which is what I was using in my earlier demos, and now is here's the dimming in the upper half. It, at 50%, it really does look like it's 50% bright. I know it's a little bit difficult to see that in the video. And actually, I can make it a little easier for you to see if I put a, some additional paper diffusion over it. We should be able to see that. Ah, there we go. So that's quite nice, the way we see that. And we can much more easily see now. Here's the top 50%. You see that is quite a uh, good linear response. I am emphasizing LED dimming a lot because in wireless applications where you want to use small batteries and have long running time, making an LED look good is uh, really a big step forward. So that's what I have to say about that. That is the four-channel small dimmer.